we will all of the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, all of the whole world, when we look at it as our mirror, help us to realize. May we not have the realization of a beast that is perishing, but may we receive the realization of an honorable man. We believe that that blessing will come upon me and my children in Jesus' name. We thank you and bless. Amen. James chapter 1, 6, 7, 8. Let's find that and read it. So the world has a double mind. Always where there's a double mind, demons will stick. You need to have sin to have a double mind. So someone with a double mind, starting from themselves, because they're dragged around by demons, they're tormented. Because they live not even knowing that they're a beast that is perishing, that's why all things don't work out. So let's try and solve this. If you don't go inside of Christ, there is no good. So, so whether you're a evil beast or if you're a man, you can't discern. The one that can't receive salvation and blessings the most is the one who doesn't love their neighbor. And so denominations, 100% will go to hell. That's Jude chapter 1 verse 19. Denominations, because they're of the flesh, they don't listen or believe the truth. Because they're of the flesh, they will surely die. And because they don't receive the Holy Spirit, they have demons, so they'll go to hell. That's what God said. But these correct words, which church tells these words? Because they're not a church, they don't. The body, the head and the body of the church is nothing but Christ. James chapter 1, verse 6, 7, 8. Let's read it. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Amen. So this is the double-minded. If you're outside of Christ, why is it that God hates this so much? When we read 2 John, that's someone who is so evil, you shouldn't even greet them. That's how evil they are. And yet to to pick someone like that or put them in public office and, ex and expect to do well, who is it that ruined the Soviet Union? Those who ha have so much education. Why is it that North Korea suffers so much? How is it the country next door? You know, they keep asking us for rice. Why? In this small country, the South, you know, we have more, you know, we have food to spare, and yet they, they don't have any. It's because they live by evil. So here it says, you, if, you don't, if you have faith without any doubting, but if you don't have faith, it says you're evil. Because you're double-minded, you can't do well. Even if you attend church, because you have this heart, it's only disadvantage to you. If you attend church with a double mind, not only are you disadvantaged because you waste your time, you attend church, nothing works out. So you think you might do well. So you try to pay tithe and you, for the building of the church, but it doesn't work. So all this time that you've lived, you're a fake. You lived without faith. So someone without faith, let's find Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. If you don't become one heart, it's, it's useless. So if you become one heart, what is it to have one heart? Someone who is being ruined next to you, you don't just watch them like a dog pig. Like Jesus, because you overflow with love. Jesus, even though the Pharisees, Sadducees, Sadducees hated it, he said, you deserve wrath. If they hate it, shouldn't he stop? No, love does it. A mother, if it's truly their child, they keep saying something to that child. 
as much as they know, they keep saying something. But if it's a stranger, they don't say anything. Oh, well, it's someone else's child. You know, they don't do it. And so that's the difference between a true mother and someone who isn't. True love to your neighbor. So this is something that happened at our church. So let's say there's a relative that you know and they, they're a fake and they have a problem. You don't say anything. If you don't say anything, then that disaster comes to me. Because according to God's word, you haven't loved your neighbor. So the second time they have another accident and you don't say anything, then your livelihood is cut off. Your business is ruined. So that's what the fakes do. Why? Because you don't have love. And you, because you can't say correct words, you're proud. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, if you're proud, God himself opposes you. So nothing works out, you're ruined. So when is it that you're proud? When you don't hold on to the word, you don't do it exactly, that's when you're proud. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. So what is it that God says here? If you have a double mind, don't even think about receiving. That's not faith. So do you have a double mind or not? You say you don't, but have a look at your life. What is it that I'm a witness when I'm in front of you? You know, when I didn't know that they were fake churches and I went there, they didn't have the mystery of God. They didn't have one heart. If you're not one heart one way, then you have nothing to do with the Bible. You have to go inside of Christ to be one heart. So those not inside of Christ, are they good or evil? Evil. So there's nothing but disasters for, for us and our children to receive. But yet you say you attend church. So if I've lived like that, so I got to 50 and that's when I started to become a pastor. That's when I truly knew the gospel. And so my children, they do exactly But they're, you know, they're a bit, fa they're, they're faster at two, three years. So that's, that's thankful. But if you don't repent, your children, they eat of that exactly because God is just. So what are you going to do? Someone who's been sick, if you can't even die. And so for years, you're, you're sick, you're tortured, you lose all your money. You know, to go to hell and to pass those diseases to your children, is that what's going to make you feel good? No, we can't do that. So then we have to obey the word. So if we obey the word, is there a disadvantage? Well, you're happy, you're satisfied, all your desires are fulfilled, your children become obedient. And in the future, you live as a patriot to your country. So where in the Bible does it say that you can be a patriot if you're outside of Christ? Why is it that you don't do well? The only way to fix this is by the word. So where in the world is there a way for you to do well? Those people who seek freedom of religion, you know, they're evil. So let's read verse 12. Take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart. So if there's someone like that, that falls away from the living God. To those people who say they won't believe in God, are they good or are they evil? They seek freedom of religion, they say their religions are all the same. It's saying here that that person is evil. If you're evil, are you a beast or are you a man? You're a perishing dog pig, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. So a perishing beast, someone who is evil, how can we, um, you know, vote for them or, or promote them or put them in public office? Or how can we use that person as an employee in our company and expect our company to do well? You'll be cursed. You can't do well. So if you use an employee and you... And, They, they don't want to do forced debt repentance because they want to ruin their owner. So God's telling us correctly, if you depart from the faith, it says here, you have an evil heart. So someone like that, how can that be your husband or your wife? They're trying to harm you and use you. Why is it that a husband complains to the wife? 
because they're like, why aren't you bringing any money from your family? I want to do bad things. So if you give him money, what does he do? He goes to a cafe or a restaurant, just sits there and says, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy my, my holiday. You know, you think that's good? It's because they're evil. So, you know, you're crazy. You want to be ruined to, to try and marry someone like that. You end up just trying to use each other because that's evil. So, someone who's departed from the faith, who doesn't want to do forced air repentance, he says, if you even greet that person, you're the same. That's how evil, evil it is. So, what are you like? Why don't you do well? If you don't have faith, that's someone who is the worst of evil. You know, you, it says here you have an evil heart. Why don't they want to believe? Because you want to live evilly. So these idiots that kill themselves and their children, let's not do that. So verse 13. So it says, today, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So it's saying, love your neighbor. It says day by day, and it says to each other, one another. So when you see someone else is wrong, it's not their wrong, it's my mirror, so it's mine. So I have to repent first, I have to repent first. And if you have love, then exhort them. But because you don't do this, you have nothing to exhort. Someone who doesn't exhort, there's, that person is evil. If you don't exhort, that means you're gossiping and criticizing behind their backs. When you see that mirror, you end up just cracking it like a monkey. So you don't receive the blessings of a man, but you become a monkey. That's why you suffer. If you go to a fake church, they don't preach this sermon because starting from themselves, they're double-minded. If your wife or your husband or your children if they say, hey, let's see what happens when you die. You know, that's good. That's joyful news. But demons, they're like, oh, you're speaking too roughly. Does, did God speak to us roughly? He tells us to do more well. Because of the, the demon of fornication, that's why we suffer. That's 99% of us because it comes out from our heart and our flesh. Why is it that your family, you don't repent and you don't exhort each other. The way to win over fornication, you know, you have to repent of more than 5,000 verses. Why can't you say this? It's only the wise who can win over it. You know, it says you have to exhort daily, today, but you end up becoming one with them. If Choi, if Deacon Choi, in the world, it seems like he's respectworthy. You know, he he does his work. He, he repents for himself. You know, if I was like that, if I just, you know, if I just live well for myself, why would I build this, this church? You know, whether you pay offering or not, whether we build this church or not. No, God hasn't made it like that. I'm just going to eat my food and I'm just going to live well by myself, you'll be ruined because you don't keep the commandment. You don't love your neighbor. So you'll go to hell. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 16. No matter how much you seem to live a good life of faith by yourself, if you don't love your neighbor, you go to hell. That's what God is. So if you make denominations and you say, oh, just us by ourselves, how can you expect salvation? And yet no one follows the truth, what's in the Bible. Romans chapter 2, verse 8. Denominations, they never follow the Bible. So they make doctrines. And, you know, when I was a layman, I went to these fake denominations. I tried to memorize the Westminster Catechism. But they made something that wasn't the Bible. If you add even one thing to the Bible, all of the 66 books of the the Bible, the 
the curses in there will come to you. God says, there are blessings in front of you. You first receive and be a witness to others. This is the blessing we have to receive. Where our desires are fulfilled, let's do well, let's go to heaven. So, it's those who aren't doing this that they don't exhort daily. And they see evil and they just sit there. What is loving your neighbor? What, what, what is it that Jesus did? The Pharisees, Sadducees, they ended up jumping up and down because of his correct words. That is loving your neighbor. If it were us, we'd be like, oh, they're too filthy. We're just going to leave them. But because Jesus was love, he said those things. But you don't, you don't do this. Does that mean you'll receive salvation? Proverbs chapter 19, verse 16. You'll go to hell. That You can't receive salvation. But before he sends you to hell, he cuts off your money. He makes your business ruined. He'll make your you fired from your job or your job disappears or if you still don't listen, he'll give you disease and then he'll kill you. That's recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 28. So what is it that God says? If you earn money with evil without repenting, Proverbs chapter 21 verse 6, as soon as you gather up some money, you'll die. So why go that way? So to earn money, to go to heaven, for your children to do more well. There is a way like this. So let's go that way. So then daily we have to exhort. So verse 13, let's read it again. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Amen. Sin, if it comes from my heart and my flesh, already I become hardened, I become evil. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, then demons stick. So you seem normal, and then suddenly you're crazy. So if you don't exhort daily, that's the person you become. So why is it that you don't do well? Why is it your work, your business, it's not working out? Because you're doing these things. If you still can't realize, then he'll make you completely ruined. But it's not just money. He'll also hit you with disease. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20. Have a look. So please, let's receive blessings. If you see something wrong, you say, you have demons. Why are you gossiping? Why are you being envious and jealous? God says you'll receive death down to your children. With love, you should exhort. That's how you go to heaven. But not just going to heaven, you'll receive blessings. So you have to go to heaven and your children have to do well. Because you don't exhort this word daily, now let's do it and go to heaven and let's save our children. Is this our men? This is how you're not ruined. Why is it that your business is ruined? Your job is ruined. You become bankrupt. You get problems. It's because of this. God, he wants you to realize and become a man and to love your neighbor. You look at people who don't do well. They they hate someone. There's someone they can't stand. That's why you can't do well. God says, even though they're your enemy, it's through that enemy for you to realize and receive blessings. They're not enemies that harm you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 to 45. So when you look at your enemy, you have to be thankful and you have to love them. Why? Because they are dying. Three and four generations, they're dying for you to do well. So how thankful is that? So if you have an enemy, it's so thankful. But when you have an enemy, are you thankful? You just want to take revenge. That's the problem. So that enemy, you don't know that they're there for you to receive blessings. If they're your enemy, then they're going to be ruined three and four generations. So that's how, so the enemy's for you to do well. So how thankful is this? If someone said, I'll die for you to do well, but not just that, they, they're ruining three and four generations for you to do well. So, you know, you're receiving too many blessings. And yet you just say, oh, that person deserves death and you can't give thanks. This is why you don't do well. From now, let's do four-step repentance properly. If you're one heart, 
then you receive everything. You go to heaven. So verse 14. So let's see if I'm outside of Christ or not. Let's check. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold fast the beginning. So when you first come and do four-step repentance and you say, this is different, you need to have that assurance. But after one year, you forget about it and you go outside of Christ. If you go outside of Christ, is it good or evil? So then you start to store up disasters. You know, you see, most of you do that at the beginning when you first come. You're like, oh. And then after a few years, you become, you start to just waste time. You do that. So hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. So more and more you have to have assurance. You have to live with confidence. That's when you become a partaker of Christ. That's when you become someone who is good. Otherwise, you're someone who has departed from Christ. You're fake. Those who depart from Christ are fakes. After a few years, you see their actions. They're strange. They're so stiff and already is this inside or outside of Christ. They're going the way of curses. So if Pastor Park didn't know this, I'd be like, oh, at the beginning, they seem to believe well. Maybe they still have some faith. But if you're outside of Christ, other than being inside of Christ, there is no good. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, we read that yesterday. So even though you read this, you know, until this lacking servant points it out, you don't know. So you say you've done good works. You, If you're not inside of Christ, it's evil. So someone who's stolen... Let's let's say stolen a million dollars and you give away a hundred thousand dollars and you say you do good, you've done good works. Oh yeah, that person still did a few good things. Is that is that being good? So someone who's not inside of Christ, can they do good works? Now you know. So how can you say oh they still did one or two good things? It's so sad. You don't even know good and evil. And you say these dog pig things. So, for example, let's say these presidents met and they were talking, and one one knows good and evil, and the other doesn't know and just and just says things without thinking. Are you going to treat them as a man? Well, someone who you shouldn't even be greeting. You know, if you say, "Oh, they still have one or two good points," are you going to treat someone like that as a man? you have to always find where you are according to the word if I don't have joy in my heart then you're not one heart if you don't have one heart then whatever you do you'll be ruined but it's not just you your children will be exterminated or they end up becoming the worst of enemies you know they put their their mother inside a greenhouse you know, are you going to blame the, the child? But how is it the mother lived? Seeking freedom of religion, going to a church without Christ to make that child like that. You know, it's the parents who raise up the child as a wolf. And that's why Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18, it's the parents who betrayed Christ. That's why the children are disobedient. And then they come. the children come back to you poking your eyes and kicking at you and saying, why aren't you dead yet? You know, if you, it's because it hasn't come out of the news, but if you go out and you see these elderly people, it's like, why, why aren't you at home? And they're like, it's better off I'm dead. You know, my kids, they're like kicking at me saying, why aren't you dead yet? How can I stay at home and, and lay there? Have you heard that? You know, I hear these things. You know, I go and listen to that. I don't go by myself, I take the deacons. If you don't live with one heart, you don't have salvation, and you're an enemy of God, and you kill all your children, and your business is ruined. You say you're doing well, after you earn some money, then you'll die. Please, don't go that way. But to exhort each other daily to love your neighbor and to receive salvation together and for your children to do well. Let's go that way. Let's close our eyes quietly. 
So, my ancestors' sins are my sins. So you say, oh, I've repented of my ancestors' sins. Well, your father's side, your mother's side. So, if there's eight sides for four generations, then at this time, their sins that they committed come back to you. They come back to you. And so, because of... So you may have been happy, joyful a moment ago, but then they make you lose your joy. So we have to keep doing forced repentance and become one heart and make our children obedient for me to do more well and to have happiness and to overflow with joy and to have prosperity and for our disease to be healed, for all our desires to be fulfilled. May we all receive this and do well. Is this Amen? So only look ahead of you and to love your neighbor. Let's call upon the Lord three times. And let's do well. There's no point going without without doing well because you will just be ruined and you will have more difficulty. Let's, let's make this work. So God will be hearing at this time. If the person standing in front of you, if I'm fake, you're all fake. If I don't repent, will I give you benefit or will I give you harm? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, I give you harm. So in order not to become a pastor like this all night long, you know, I, you know, I don't sleep. I can't sleep because it's so good. So you doing well is for me to go to heaven. That's loving your neighbor. So that's how I live. And then I save my children. So making you do well, it's all one. It's not that I make you do well and I die, or, but it's together. So if your flesh is tired, you keep wanting to sleep. I'm the same. You know, if I meditate after about 30 minutes and I start to fall asleep, so I quickly get up and I go bathe or walk around as, as I repent. So I continue to do that and I stay up till now. And then, and then, um, my grandchild comes when he's about to go to school and always to greet me. Why? So that I won't sleep. If I don't sleep, what do I do? I have to repent. So I'm joyful about them. So, so after I repent, then it's after nine o'clock. Uh, he goes, at, my grandchild goes about nine ten. So, so why don't I sleep? Why is it? that that young child always comes to greet me. You know, that's God telling me not to sleep. You know, you need to realize. So about 10, 11, you know, sleep starts to come, I get tired. And so then I sit on a chair and, and then I repent. You know, if I'm kneeling, my legs hurt, so... And then I fall asleep for about five, ten minutes, but it feels like I've slept the whole day. It's so good. That's how I spend my time. So let's live by repentance. Let's live by one heart, one way. We will do well. Our children will do well. Our country will do well. Let's call upon the Lord three times and pray. Lord. 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 Father God. Father God. May we love our neighbor daily and exhort each other to take the blessings in front of me. <laughs>